Oh, what is going on with this? That's I not where I wanted it. to go. Hold on, folks. There we go. What did you do? Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. This is Jeremiah's J-Man Manero with J-Man Speaks. Coming to you live with this guy. Jeffrey Scott Stanton. How are you, J-Man? Pretty good, man. Uh, you know, I haven't seen you in such a while. I missed you. I felt like we needed to do a live stream. It's been wait a, a second. Weeks. Wait a second. We, we saw each other over the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> man, just a couple days makes one week, bro. You know? It's nice to see people in person. I didn't see yeah, it is. Me, me and J Man, me and J Man were down at the Real Estate Educators Association annual conference yes, over this weekend right. in beautiful Atlanta, Georgia. Atlanta, Georgia, Hot Atlanta. Shout out to Hot Atlanta. Here you go. Oh, there we go. You know I hate. If we got anybody watching from you Atlanta, know. listen. I went to the Slutty Vegan. That's the best place I've ever been to in my whole life. They created an experience. Uh, if you know the, the owner of the Slutty Vegan, have him reach out because I want to interview her on how to create a company culture that's second to none. All right. Yeah, I'd be interested in that. Yeah, I mean, it was, I'm not, you know, I'm like you. I'm not easily impressed. <laughs> People will be yeah. like, you got to go to this place. I'm like, okay, let's go. Like, I'm happy to just pack my lunch and have like a turkey sandwich. <laughs> and they're Let's go. And we go. And I'm like, okay. They walked in. They're like, cuckoo. Yo, we got New York in the house. I was like, yeah. No, sorry. We're off track. Very easy. What are we talking about today, man? So uh, we have much to say about nothing and much to say about everything. Um, if we have anybody watching, it's always my first thing. If you are, just say something in the comments so we know you're actually alive. And me and J-Man aren't doing the me and J-Man show just for each other. Even though we, we would do that. So that's not a big issue. That's true. Sometimes I'll sit in my uh, studio by myself and just give myself a round of applause. <laughs> uh. um, Sherry just said hi, guys. Oh, Sherry. All right. Let's bring her up on the screen here. Shout out. There you go. Make, little shout out. So make head, sure you buddy. follow and like and share Sherry's info. <clears throat> so uh, today... I think we actually started this. I think we were going to do it a couple of weeks ago and we just got sidetracked because it is much to say about nothing. And we literally go whatever direction we wind up going for that day. Yeah. So uh, we were talking, I've said, we talk about order qualifiers versus order winners. And this is something you actually learn in business school. And there's a major difference between being an order qualifier, someone qualified to do business versus someone who's can win the business. So I always, I always ask agents, you know, oh. and we're talking a lot about this on our podcasts. Right. Now J man's getting it. <clears throat> so it, it's, and it's a business term. Like they learn it when you go to your MBA and stuff like that. So, um, we've been talking a lot about on my company podcast about your X factor and those types of things. So part of it is your X factor and you ask agents like, Hey, what's your X factor? Oh, I give good customer service. Good customer service is an order qualifier, meaning that just makes you qualified like standard, to right? do the business. So <clears throat> by definition, I'll give you the, the actual definition. Um, order qualifiers are the necessary attributes that a product or service must present, I'm sorry, must possess for it to be entered into competition. Order winners, however, are the winning attributes that lead the customers to buy their product or service. Hold up, hold up, hold up. For those who might be listening to this when it does become the podcast. So are you reading something off the wall? Is there something framed on the wall? Is there a computer screen? What are you looking at? Yeah, there's a computer. I was looking. There's a computer screen. I had the, def, oh. the actual definition. <laughs> I'm like, you look like you're like, Lord, tell me, what is an order qualifier? <laughs> no, I was. Look, I have my screen. I have multiple screens like you do, and that one was I over know. there. Well, that's <laughs> so I, I put figured, my screen like at, 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 at eye level so that I didn't look up or down mainly when I'm looking at them. But it it just it just how in the way I'm sitting today because I have back pain. So again, order qualifiers is the minimum attributes, the minimum qualities, the minimum you have to do to even be in that competition pool. The auto winner is your qualification or attribute that makes that consumer choose you. <clears throat> so I think a lot of times when we talk to consumers, buyers, sellers, whatever it happens to be, a lot of things we tell them are just order qualifiers, meaning this allows me to throw my hat into the ring for your listing, for your buyer contract, whatever it happens to be, and not the order winner. 
<clears throat> and I think there's a huge distinction. So I think that's why I figured let's let's start that uh, uh, that off as the you know the drop off point or the jump off point. Jumping off, yeah. So I'll put your house in the MLS qualifier. Yes, yes. Um, I have a customized video marketing strategy. Could be an auto winner. Oh, but no. hold on. This is for you again. <laughs> I'm going to get like a, maybe like a, something you might like. What would be nice? Like a, like a, a bell sound, like a ding, ding, ding. Let's do cowbell. Okay. I'll find. I shouldn't bell. even said that. I should. <laughs> but triangle. <clears throat> That's a nice one. You oh no, that. no, that, oh uh, no, oh. that blows out my eardrum. How about this one? No, let, let's stop with it. In fact, oh, that's nice. Like when you have a good idea, oh. so I'll never, I'll never play this, but when you have a good idea, it'll <laughs> like, oh, hello okay. there. <clears throat> so that's, that's the, the difference is a lot of things we tell sellers and buyers, we give them things like, oh, you know, I have a, you know, I, I take, I take lovely photos. That's not what to qualify. You have to take lovely photos. Now, if you're using your iPhone and you're taking a photo in the bathroom and you see your own reflection, you're not even an auto qualifier, meaning you're right. not even qualified to do the business. And there's a key distinction between the two, like uh, market knowledge. Market knowledge is an auto qualifier, not an auto winner. Market knowledge where you have an in-depth market knowledge where you can say, yes, yeah, that, that house down the street, area. the reason why it sold this is because it has, you know, those crown moldings and this kind of tile and this, that now becomes an auto winner. So or most like in, of the things in, that in the city, say, if you're, you know, if you have specific knowledge of a building or a block or everything within that block, yeah, those are order winners because you definitely s specialize in that area. You're not just, yeah, I have a license for real estate and can show you anything in the state. Absolutely. But the thing is, if 10 other people are there with that seller and they all have that same expertise it's no longer an auto winner it goes back to an yeah, auto qualifier but that's fewer and farther between <laughs> hey guys this is not a bud light this is a just a water bottle shout out to iqd home inspections cqi <laughs> it's twisted around um they gave me a, you give me free stuff you'll get shout outs I didn't know that's the way that it worked. So like, I'm curious, anyone who's listening to us or watching us live is what's something that you think may be an order winner that we can talk about, which may actually be an order qualifier. Cause I hear way too many of agents, you know, saying things that really is not going to win the business. That just means you can compete against the other people, but you aren't necessarily winning. I was waiting for you to say. <laughs> I to oh, say I thought that. we were waiting for comments. That's why I, I hit the <coughs> I hit the the crickets. Um, hmm. I, I'm on social media. Qualifier. I I'm on Instagram with sixty thousand followers. Winner. Winner. Could be. I'm on. Could be. Si I'm on with sixty thousand followers with no engagement. That's not an order winner. That's called. You know, this is the thing. If if you go to a if you go to a seller and say, "Yeah, I do video," and it's you doing your iPhone, that's a qualifier. You're doing professional video. That may be an order winner. So that well, that's it, the distinction it, of it. I think it's demonstrating the results, right? So if every time I walk into a listing appointment, it's like we have a customized video marketing strategy. I take my phone out and I go like this. <laughs> Here's the results. <laughs> Here's the insights. Here's the engagement Absolutely. we get. And then they go, okay. And more, more often than not, we're there because they already knew that, you know, in, in the mm -hmm. digital age, they're, they're searching us up before you get there. They've seen something or somebody has sent them something about you so much easier. You walk in so much warmer than you would have 10 or 15 years ago, right? 15 years ago, you walk in, you got to prove yourself, your company, your market share. You got to pull out your telephone yep. book ad, you know, <laughs> Here's our yellow page ad. We pay for the biggest one. <coughs> one, yay. The the other sense. thing is that, you know, and, I, and I'll go back to agents say, well, you know, I'm a people person. <laughs> is that an order winner? Oh, I love that. You know, what's funny is I said that in my, in my real estate interview. <laughs> 
for the first company I started, we're like, why should you work here? I'm like, I'm a people person. Ah, I love real estate. I just feel like. Again, that, the, but that that's order qualifiers. Like, yeah, these no, are no. Things that you... But I thought that that was special at the time. Um, and I didn't know that they were using the fog, the mirror test anyways, you know? <laughs> yeah. A lot of companies use that. Yeah. So like, this is the best way, the order, like what's the minimum that I need to do to even be in this competition? That is a qualifier. Regardless of the industry. Regard, regardless of the industry, because it could be an, it could be a product too. And that's by definition, doesn't matter what the industry is. What is the minimum criteria I need to meet for my hat to be thrown into that competition? And I think a lot of agents, they think they have order winners, but really everything they're saying is qualifiers. Now you can take an order qualifier and change it to an order winner based upon how you explain it. I used to use, <laughs> Jody said, people. I used to use, I'm a people person too. <laughs> you know, so you, you can take that, you know, I'm a people person and explain that and show how yeah. that's value or a benefit to the consumer. So let's do that. And let's, that let's can then become further. I said, I'm a people so, person. Like, listen, You're helping me to, to develop that into something that I can use as a UVP. Okay. So what makes you a people person? I have the ability to build rapport in a short period of time and help people make good decisions. Okay. That's better than I'm a people person. So now J man, I'm the seller. Yeah. How does that benefit me by you being able to build rapport and help people make easier decisions? Well, I can help them to realize the value in your home when they come to visit during an open house. Now you're getting to an order winner. Because oh, <clears throat> you took, I'm a people person to, hey, I can build rapport, help people make decisions and those types of things. And then on top of that, it is now you have a direct benefit to the consumer. Now that becomes an order winner. So you can take qualifiers and then put on what do I do and what's the direct benefit to the consumer, to this buyer or seller, mm -hmm. and that potentially it could be an order winner. Because I'd much rather do business with someone who says, hey, I can build rapport easily, help people make decisions easily. And the benefit, the benefit to of that to you is I'm able to explain the value easier of your home. Therefore mm -hmm. people are going to make an easier decision to purchase your home. Like now that's an order winner. Not to mention, or let's not forget the relationships that we develop in real estate with agents on the other side of the transaction, right? If, if I'm a people person, I'm able to build rapport and I've been in the business for 16 years working from a win, win, uh, philosophy, then when somebody writes an offer on my listing or I write an offer on somebody else's listing, they know that we're working together towards a common goal, which is to get the property sold, get the offer accepted or whatever the case may be. 100%. So now that becomes more towards an order winner than just, Hey, I know every agent in town, every like, Oh, I have a network of agents. Great. That could be a qualifier. Everybody should have a network of agents, but what makes it that winner is the benefit to that consumer is that unique attribute to you that you have that makes it a winning attribute that yes, I'll make the decision based upon that. What are you doing? I don't know. I felt like I wasn't dressed up enough. Oh, I thought you were getting cold or something. You know, what's funny with the led lights. I actually, if I'm doing like two or three hours of CE in the studio here, I get hot. I'll start sweating. With LED, you shouldn't with LED lights. Maybe it's just that my future is so bright. I don't know. <laughs> but I'm bump. Uh, that was good. God. Wait, do I have? I think I have. I, I, I need my sound effects. Where is my. Ba -da -ba? I know I had one. By the it's, you wait too long, then the ba -da -ba doesn't really make a difference. Okay, I'll just do this. <laughs> so. <laughs> So the people I know, we have, we have a bunch of people watching us. So I'm curious what anyone in the live radio audience or video audience, and J-Man's walking by, actually thinks maybe an order winner or an order qualifier that may or may not be. Because this is how you win the business. You know, again, we've been talking a bunch about X Factor on one of the other podcasts. And, you know, it comes down to what makes you uniquely you 
And not only that, how does that uniquely you, how does that attribute, how does that, your background, your past experience, how is that a benefit to the consumer? Because I can say, listen, I'm number one in my market. Yeah, Great. What is, what is if that I'm mean? a new, if, if I'm a number one in my market, I have 30 listings. You know what? That isn't necessarily an order winner. Because if I'm an agent and I'm going up against you and I can say, yeah, you know what, Jamin, absolutely. He's got 30 listings. I limit myself to only two or three listings at a time so I can fully focus on those two or three people. I don't know how he does that with 30. Right. So yeah, you, what you I've, thought was just an order winner. <laughs> yeah. I, I used to do this when I was a new agent, didn't have a lot of, a lot of listings. Mm -hmm. and I'm going against like a rainmaker that's got all this market share. I'd go, yeah, he's got a lot of listings. Could you imagine? How can he stay in touch with all of those clients? Me? You're all I got. I'm going to stay in touch yeah. with you every single day. Isn't that great? And then they go, well, you're sure, going to hear more from me life. than anyone else in your entire life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. Just flip the script, flip it. So again, it has to be like that winner is, it has to be a direct benefit to the consumer. You know, it, God, you were about to say something. You, you get me, Jeffrey. Uh, I was about to say, we always talk about the three E's, education, experience, and expertise, right? To developing your unique value proposition because so many, so many of you just got started in real estate, but you've had a whole life before that. You have life experience Absolutely. that you bring to the table. You have expertise in anything or a certain area, and then you have education uh, in a specific field. It doesn't have to be, you know, real estate or marketing or sales. There's so many other things. No, it's because you can, to the table. you can take anything you did previously and put a real estate spin on it. Like yeah. you can, this we sure. tell, I always tell agents when they're new is what'd you do before this? Oh, I was, you know, I worked in retail sales. Okay. And then I'll ask this question. What made you, if you were successful, what made you successful? And what do you give me three traits, three skills, three things that made you successful and then write those three things down. Because I bet you you can correlate them to real estate. Once you separate out those separate those three things, and those three things, when you explain it, could be the order winner. Uh, if you're watching this, why don't you put what you did prior to real estate in the comments, and then we can kind of expand off of that. Yeah. I could use, uh, for, for example, I door knocked. I was a door knocker. I sold security systems door to door. Then I became the sales manager, mm -hmm. regional manager, so on and so forth. The rest is history, but door knocking every single door in the county where I live gave me a specialized knowledge of the neighborhoods, the homes that were there, the points of interest, everything that matters to somebody who's looking to purchase, right? Cause you, you buy a lifestyle more than you buy a home. And I've literally walked the streets and knocked on every door. But that's no, that doesn't really relate to real estate at all. Huh? No, you know, it, no. it, listen, we had, we had one of the gentlemen um, who's with our company was a newer agent was a um, professional uh, tennis instructor. He's like, how do I relate that? I'm like, you're a coach. Aren't you used to making sure people excel and making sure people operate at their best? And do you think that's a high pressure situation? And he's like, yeah, absolutely. I'm like, cause high pressure situations, being able to coach someone in the direction that they need to go, that has nothing to do with real estate. And he's like, Oh yeah, that makes sense. Oh, we got some good so, ones. So uh, we have first we had Marianne as was a retail sales manager, and then we'll get to Sherry, and then we'll get to Jody. So again, retail sales manager, you're used to dealing with different personalities and different types of people coming from employees to customers. You know, that's it. You don't think that's real estate? Because real estate, you're dealing with different personalities and different people every single day. You're used to managing a team. If you're a, a, a sales manager, a lot of times you're also doing their numbers. Right. So I'm used to doing numbers. I'm used to, you know, at the end of the week, at the end of the month, reporting these numbers, making sure the numbers are exact. No, that has nothing to do with real estate. That has everything to do with real estate. Right. And that literally, you can take what you used to do previously. And instead of just being an order qualifier, you can make it that order winner. You know, Sherry says worked in advertising, got a master's in education. Okay. Worked in advertising. No, that has nothing to do with real estate. So write down the three things that made you successful in real estate and in, in advertising. And then say, how does this relate to real estate? Listen, you have mass in education. So do I being an understanding that education and you understand the process that goes behind it 
to better educate your consumers so they can make the best decision possible. See what I just said? I take the education background. Right. You know, Mr. Ms. Smith, my background I actually went to school to be a teacher. Um, I have a master's in education. And what that enables me to do is explain the information and make sure you fully understand it so you actually can make an educated decision. Because ultimately, you want to make an educated decision, don't you? Don't you? Oh, I do what you're uh -huh. Yes. So it just makes sense to consider me yep. as your real estate professional. Yep. Same thing yeah. as someone was with telemarketing. That absolutely derails. Somebody was a server. Where were you a server? Because servers, are, are you dealing in a fast-paced environment? Do you have to handle multiple things at the same exact time and deal with multiple people at the same exact time? Absolutely. So you can take those and make them either qualifiers or make them winners depending upon what they actually are. I was a bartender when I first started. Busy club, five people deep the whole time. Want to talk about clutch under pressure, which real estate can be, you know, a high pressure situation. I used to have six people deep flipping the bottles around. <laughs> But again, you can make that related to real estate, right? High pressure, you know, dealing with multiple people at the same exact time. You know, numbers I, I at a nice, fast but, you know, pace, having to add up five, six, twelve things at a time. One of the things that one of the things that's a benefit to to you, Mr. Missal, previously before I joined real estate, I was actually a, a bartender in a very high end uh, club, and by doing that, I realized that I have to be able to deal with. 10 people in front of me or maybe even 30 people in front of me and make sure each one of those are actually satisfied because that's how I got paid. And that's really similar to real estate because we're going to have 30 different buyers walk into your open house, 10 different agents. We're going to be dealing with title companies. We're going to deal with mortgage companies. And you really need an agent that's used to dealing with that pressure and handling those 30 or 40 people at the same exact time. And sometimes all of them are very unreasonable. <laughs> mm-hmm. So that's the difference between order qualifier, you know, I have customer service experience and order winner. I like real estate because I get to see houses. <laughs> uh, so I, I had a client okay. tell me that the other day. Real estate seems so fun. You guys get to see houses all day. Yeah. Yep. That's okay. it. That's all we okay. do. Okay. Um, yeah, if you love to see house every day. I hear people all the time that brand, when I used to teach like the sales qualifier and I would go around the room and ask them, hey, why are you getting into real estate? Oh, um, I love houses. I want to make lots of money. I have lots of free time. That's not even an order qualifier. Right. You're going to have a lot more time because you're not going to be selling any houses very long. Absolutely. Find a tent and put it in the middle of the park. So anyone else, anyone, I'm curious, anybody else, we had a bunch of people wrote in, uh, uh we, we had server tele, you know, you co covered that, um, yep. Sherry talked about advertising and then masters in education. We had Marianne, the retail sales manager, but any of those, and, and maybe it's not even that you're new to real estate. Maybe you're experienced in real estate and how do you use that? Hey, I have 15 years experience. How do you switch that into potentially an order winner. Now, if you have 15 years experience and based upon you have 15 years experience, you understand the pricing and you understand the market dynamics. And I understand this neighborhood and the reason why people buy in this neighborhood is because of the dog park down the street and they want to be able to walk to the dog park. Like you can take that 15 years of experience or 20 years of experience, which may only be a qualifier right. and explain what's the benefit of those 15 years of experience to the consumer. And then it actually can become an order winner. Yeah, we always like to say everybody's favorite radio station is W I I F M. What's in it for me? And if What's you can't, if you can't um, explain to them, like, okay, you're 15 years in the business. What does that mean? How does that benefit me? How mm -hmm. can you help me in the transaction because of that? Because some people are in the business 15 years, but it's one year at a time. Oh same yeah. Year, so over and over. <clears throat> along that same, along that same route. It's, you know, we tell the consumers what we do. We even show them how we do it. The problem is people don't buy what you do. They don't buy how you do it. They buy it the why. 
And more importantly, people buy why they need you to do it for them. So we give them a how, we give them a what, I do marketing, this is how I do it. Why are you doing it that way? And what's the direct benefit to that seller by you doing it that way? Now you actually get into the winners. But we leave out the why. A lot of people even leave out the how, they just say what? And just saying, I, I'm good at marketing, I market your property. We'll put it on you know, social media. We'll put it on okay. the how we'll are you put doing it on that the, on the Facebook. On the Facebook, on the book face. We put it on the book face, Miss and uh, Mrs. Uh, no, but our customized social media marketing strategy where we can target the ideal purchaser of your home and get you more money in less time with the least amount of stress to you. And actually, we specialize in the digital advertising of it. So it's highly likely that somebody may not even come in to see it in person because our first showings happen online. Absolutely. So now you're getting the how what you do, how you're doing it and why you're doing it and more importantly, what the direct benefit to that consumer actually is. So now that is an order winner opposed to I advertise on social media with paid advertisement and using targeted ads. Cuz if everything J man said, if he left out doo -doo -doo -doo, if he left out the benefit to that seller, it's not a winner because you have to explain like we think the sellers know why we do things. They don't. Right. They, Especially they, they when don't. it's something like cutting edge or related to technology. That That's the biggest difference. Like if I say, oh, I do video, they're going to go, well, what does that even mean when it comes to my house and how is that going to help me? or social media or anything else. And you start talking about digital advertising. It's such a new concept just to real estate people in general, right? But then you talk yeah. to the consumer, unless they're really, totally I, I love when I have a consumer that's tech savvy and I start talking about social media and, and, cus and they're like, mm -hmm. yeah, I get it. Oh yeah, hey, that's, yeah. yeah. that's yeah. why I called you. I'm like, oh, all right, let's skip to the paperwork then. I already sent it to you via AuthentiSign. <laughs> Press hard on your mouse. Electric, electronic <laughs> copy is yours. Press on three electronic copies. <laughs> Press on three electronic copies. So, I mean, and, and that's why when we talk about bringing it back, the order qualifier versus order winner is, I think that's hugely important. And I think a lot of times, no matter what the experience is, if you're brand new, you don't know what your X factor is. You don't know what your order winner is. And when your experience you rely on the fact that you're experienced to think that that is an order winner when in fact it's not. Well, and I, I think, think that's, that's just a different shift. That's kind of uh, brings us to an, another important point, like to get feedback, candid feedback from your clients after each transaction, mm -hmm. good, bad, or indifferent. It's important that you know, number one, why they did business with you. And if there was a pain point, what was it? So you can make it better. 100% agree with you. So what I used to say to a lot of clients is, you know, Mr. J man, um, during the transaction of any time, if, if there's something that I'm doing that you think I may be able to do better or do differently, please let me know immediately because I want to be able to correct immediately. Is that okay? Yeah, I mean, if you could be on of time course for the podcast, they can... that'd be great. I was on time for the podcast. Of course, of course, they're gonna say yes. And then every once in a while you check in, hey, J man, how's everything going? You know, is everything okay? Is anything you want me to do differently? And if you ask that, if there is something that, well, Jeff, you know, I didn't like it that, you know, we were ready. We thought you were going to show up at the open house an hour beforehand and you showed up 10 minutes with the saw in your hand. I'm so sorry. It's not going to happen again. I will make sure I show up at your house an hour beforehand because you have time to correct it. Right. And that instead of them after the fact being annoyed about it. So, you know, it, it's, it's the same thing. Like you go to a restaurant and they say, is everything okay? Oh, how was your dinner tonight? Oh, it's fine. Because they're not asking for anything specific. So if the manager oh, went yeah, to you and said, mm -hmm. Hey, Mr. Hey, Mr. Smith, listen, I was at a restaurant. Re I was at a restaurant recently where I go in and the manager comes over. Is your first time here? I said, yeah, absolutely. He took a red napkin and put it down on the table. Oh, that's so smart. And I'm like, I know what he's doing. And I, I smiled as soon as he did it. He goes, perfect. And he goes, this is our specials. This is this, this is that. He goes, and if anything does not come out to your liking, please let me know immediately. I'll check back with you after your first course. 
can I make a suggestion also? I said, yeah, absolutely. He goes, do you like blah, blah, blah? I said, yeah. He goes, you should try that as an appetizer. So we ordered our appetizer and didn't order that. And the manager comes over as soon as the appetizer goes down. He goes, you know what? I got you a smaller order of this just so you could try it because I know you'll love it. I'm like, I am going to this place forever. I am going to this place. And he checked in with me enough. Like he'd look over and just give me a look like, is everything okay? I'm good. But if it wasn't, if something was too salty, I would have said, hey, this is a little bit too salty. Now, you have places that don't do that, and you leave, and I go to J-Man, hey, I was at blah, 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 whatever. The food was way too salty because they don't give them time to correct it. So in real estate, if you give the consumer the permission to let you know when you mess up and you correct it, that's going to be a lifelong customer. What if, listen to this because this is going to be a good one. We put a red napkin on all of our first time home buyers. That's the point. Oh, shoot. That, that's right. It's, es especially because, like, the, so often we're in real estate where, you know, we sell all these houses, hundreds of houses in our career, and we don't realize all the things that that first time home buyer doesn't know. Uh, I also equate it to like mm -hmm. like a wedding planner, right? A wedding planner does a wedding every weekend, multiple weddings per weekend. Yep. To them, it's like another one, oh, uh, another one, another one, another one. But for that person getting married, it's their special day. They're going to remember that for their entire lifetime. And that's the way a real estate transaction mm -hmm. is. Especially, I mean, you never forget the first house you bought. My first home that I bought, well, I bought a co-op in Queens that didn't really count. But when I came back to Rochester my first transaction inspired me to get into real estate because it was so awful. Yeah. It's think about this. Like we tell people we provide good customer service. How do they know until they're doing business with us? So good customer service is an order qualifier. The red napkin is the winner. Jamie, I told you we were, we were in, when we were in Atlanta, we went to SDK and steakhouse food was really good. I went back the next day. Hey, memory from yesterday. Hi, memory from last night. How's everything going on? Oh, listen, listen, we'll see. We have a, there's a little way for a table. But we have a high top. You two can sit down. Like, I'll go back there because of the experience. Right. Because it was above and beyond the normal customer service. So customer service can be an order winner. However, it's not an order winner till after you provided the excellent customer service. At the end of the transaction, it's the order winner because I'm going to tell every single person that you did X, Y, and Z for me. You know, I use I use the scenario, and I love taking things from outside of real estate and bringing it into real estate. Ocean Prime Steakhouse and Seafood. There's it's not a chain, but it's the same owners in all major cities. First time I we went there was in D.C. It was for my girlfriend's birthday. I actually we wanted to go someplace else, couldn't get reservations, so I did the reservation online and it asked any special occasions. And I said her birthday. We walk in. At the, at the time, they don't say, do you have a reservation? They say, are you Mr. Stanton? And I'm like, yes, I am. Goes, oh, says, for you too. Over. That was like, you were like, yes, I am. Looks, looks, like, over, looks, over my, looks, over, looks over my girlfriend and goes, Mr. Vino, happy birthday. Your table's ready, but would you like to sit at the bar and have a drink first? Oh, damn. That was okay. so good. Sit at, sit at the bar, have a drink. The, the the bartender walks over and says i heard it's your birthday your first drinks on me sit down at the table the server comes over happy birthday mr vino how's everything doing like it was such an experience i will always recommend the place because of that experience but again that they Did weren't they the winners from after. the app from the reservation i'm just trying to figure out the technology in the back end or did they yeah so so they yeah. ask is it a special occasion that's what they ask I said, yes, birthday. Then they sent me a text message confirming and said, oh, you had marked birthday. Whose birthday is it? It was via the text confirmation. Okay. Okay. All right. I like you it. Know, I like and it. I'm like, the smartest thing in the world because any city we're in, if there's one, we will go to because they won all the future orders by them doing that type of customer service. Like you check into the Ritz Carlton or, or any of those high ends. You ever notice when you get over, like valet takes your bags and you get to the front and they say, Mr. Stanton, checking in. How the hell do they know my name? You know what they do? They look at your luggage tag and the valet goes to checking in, last name Stanton, in the woman's ear. She sees you walk in and says, 
Mr. Stanton, welcome. Checking in, and I'm like, this is like, like my God, because right. again, customer service can be the winner, but only the winner once you provide the customer service. Oh wait, so so let's go back to the slutty vegan. This is mm -hmm. yeah, a please. restaurant, a restaurant. Um, because let me just re reiterate that in case you weren't on in the beginning. So there, there's a, <laughs> a, a chain of restaurants or <coughs> vegan vegan restaurants in the Atlanta area locally owned and i think they're franchising out to other other parts of the country but somebody said to me oh you got to go check this out i'm not a vegan but i i will check out places that they say like it's an experience right that that was the description mm -hmm. i got it's an experience to go there and i'm like okay is it gonna be hokey is it gonna be like like what does experience mean to these folks that are referring it and as soon as i walk in there's a person in the like lobby area, the vestibule where like you're waiting to take an order, this is like a takeout place. It's not necessarily a sit down uh, kind of establishment. There's a person just mm -hmm. standing there like, their job is to create fun. You know, they were like, oh, 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 whoa. yo man, where you at? Where you at? Where you from? Where you from? You New York, right? It's just, it's just New York vibe. Jeff and I kept getting that. They're like, New York, yeah. okay, we got a slutty yeah. beach. As soon as you walked in any place, New York. Yeah, like, New York, yeah. <laughs> so I, I walk in, she's like, oh, New York, New York. Oh, you ever been here before? No. Oh, we got a slutty vegan virgin in the house, everybody. And then the all everybody working there goes, go, go, let's go. And they created this environment, bro, with like the music's <clears throat> going and everything. I'm like, this is the funnest place I've ever been to eat in my yep. entire life. And the food was okay. Like, I'm not vegan. I love meat. But I will go back there again. It was the most fun I've had for a See, fifty dollar lunch <clears throat> in my life. You know, like, wow. So let's let's talk about what you said. The food wasn't like like because Jamie is not a vegan; he likes beef. So this is the thing: when you provide that phenomenal experience at a restaurant, it makes up for the food. So right. if the food was like I'm the food there has for to be the okay. food, but I'm coming back because of the experience. That is, and that is your buyer and seller. That's why they come back to you. That's why they tell their friends about, about you. Because if you mess up, as long as you provide that phenomenal experience, when you go to a restaurant, if the food is just okay, but it's a great experience, you'll, you'll, you will recommend it to other people based upon the experience. If the food was good, but the service was crap, you will not recommend that place. You won't say, oh, it was whatever, food's good, service is crap, I wouldn't go there. But what I'll say is, hey, the food, the food, was, the food was okay, the service is phenomenal. And then right. people are gonna go there. Well, let's bring it back to like real estate because because I see that like in this market where people might be writing multiple offers for buyers, offer after offer after offer. And, mm -hmm. and there was a day during the summer where I was I was getting jaded myself and I'm like, oh, I have to write another offer. That's how I felt. I have to write another offer. Like I'm so like that's the worst mm -hmm. thing in the world that I have to write another offer. And I thought to myself like, it's up to us to create that experience with the buyer that they will remember. It can be one where they they have an agent who's like Eeyore from freaking Winnie the Pooh is going, uh, nobody loves us. We don't get any offers accepted. I don't know if you know we'll ever get you know, and, and that's your or you could be like, Oh, okay, that's all right, that's another one. We're this much closer, and that's how I had to, I had to like change my mindset. We're this much closer. One day we're gonna be at your housewarming party talking about the journey that we had to go mm -hmm. through all the offers that we had to go through. And then you bust out the cliches. Everything happens for a reason. Like if it's meant to be, it'll be. And, and, it, and when you truly believe that and can transfer that enthusiasm, that's all this, uh, the sales process is, is a transfer of enthusiasm. You transfer that to the buyers, then Ooh, their like head's going to perk up. Right. Okay. Sorry. I ding, 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 ding. Oh. No, I like, I like that. The transfer of enthusiasm. <clears throat> and this is, and this is what I'll say too. You know, especially for those of you who are in that big seller's market where you do have multiple offers. How are you treating that buyer, not client, that buyer, customer, and how are you treating the other agent? Because I've heard buyers say to me, I wouldn't buy that house because of the agent. Really wouldn't do it. Because they went to an open house from that agent months ago, and that agent treated them like crap, and then you know, blew them off, never responded, nothing like that. That's part of that. Like, hey, I won the order now, but how do I keep on winning? How do I keep on winning to make sure I set myself up? Because if you treat a consumer like crap, they're going to say, oh, no, I went to Bob. I went to his open house. The guy was a jerk. And they're going to tell all the friends they were a jerk. 
You know, it used to be that you'd have <clears throat> before the internet was big. I feel so old. It used to be that before if you had one dissatisfied, correct. When it used to be DARPANET, um, it used to be. <laughs> sorry, now I'm really showing my old. It used to be if you if you had if you treated someone poorly, they had poor customer service, poor, poor experience. They would tell ten other people. If you treated someone well and they had a great customer experience, you were lucky if they told two or three. Now they will tell the whole entire world about their crappy experience or the whole mm -hmm. entire world about their phenomenal experience. You know, agents ask all the time, well, I don't understand why clients don't write me reviews. Well, first of all, you don't ask them. And second of all, maybe they wouldn't give you a good review in the first place. Did you shave today? Yes. Oh. Why? No, the lighting in here is very weird, and I'm coming across you look very like you're fuzzy. You're growing a beard. I haven't shaved in like four or five days. Let me see. No, three <laughs> days. Yeah, now it's just the lighting in here is very poor today. I don't know why. You guys can't see. And I'm this. on a if lag you're listening too, to, If you're listening to this, you can't see that I have a really like a five o'clock shadow, like you wouldn't believe. I look like. He has a five o'clock shadow, and he hasn't shaved in five days. <laughs> it's a five day shadow, man. All right, I Listen, think we're I've good. Had a five o'clock. I've had a five o'clock shadow since I'm twelve years old. Um, I know. I look at when I was younger. I was always jealous of my friends that that had to shave twice a day because their fake IDs would work, and mine would never. <laughs> I, I'd give them. They'd be like, "Get out of here, kid! You're like twelve. I'd be like, "No, I'm nineteen. What do you mean, sir?" Uh, but now it's okay. I'm. I don't. I'm not jealous about that stuff. I'm baby faced. Well, so what let's is, leave it off this way. Yeah, let's leave it. Let's 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 leave it off this way. Something in closing. And I'm going to go back to the original topic: qualifier versus winner. Are you just qualified to do business, or do you have the attributes to win the business? And just because you think you have the attributes to win the business, if you can't explain to the consumer why those attributes are important to them and why that's going to benefit them, they're not. You're not an order winner. You're back to an order qualifier. I think that's the best way of summing up the difference between an order qualifier and an order winner. So your homework or your mission, if you choose to accept it, is to figure that out. What's your unique value proposition? What's what makes you different? Do your education, expertise, and experience put it in three different columns? Write down everything you can think of from the from the from birth, <laughs> everything mm -hmm. that you bring to the table, and then not just put down what it is, but how it benefits the consumer. And you yep. could have a better conversation the next time you're in front of a buyer or seller. You know, they also call it the elevator, uh, you know, speech, because if you hopped in the elevator and Jeffrey had 10 different houses he wanted to sell today, could you convince him that you were the person to work with by the time he got to the next floor? Absolutely. Very cool. So I am Jeffrey Scott Stanton. And I'm Jeremiah's J-Man Monero. And we have much to say about nothing. Tune in next week at our regular time, 1230 on a Tuesday. And tune in tomorrow, Friday, 930 a.m. I will be talking about the death of Instagram television. <gasps> boom, boom, boom. I want to hear about that. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>